Hi, this is Stacey Chalemi from The Advisor, and I'm very excited because I have a very special guest. His name is Ryan Kopiar. He's been our, on our show before, and I had to have him back because he's just amazing. He's going to tell you a little about himself just for people who don't know who he is, and then we're going to just take it from there. So Ryan, just go go with the flow. Just take it on, baby. All right. Well, it's great to be with you again, Stacey, and I miss the... Uh... I miss the East Coast accent. It, it takes me back to the, the Jersey, uh, <laughs> Staten Island, Long Island, uh, Brooklyn, uh, my, my people out on the East Coast. So yeah. hi to all my people out there on the East Coast. Um, yeah, so I am a, a mental health professional. I'm licensed in two different countries. And so in Vancouver, uh, British Columbia, I'm a registered clinical counselor. And in the state of Washington, I'm a licensed mental health counselor associate and in Oregon, a professional counselor associate. So uh, I'm, a, I'm an associate level counselor. I graduated with my master's from Liberty University. Uh, and I love to help people. I love people. I love helping people. I love helping people to understand the connection of the mind, body, soul and how those can be aligned so that we can live um, you know, that joyful, loving, peaceful, happy life that I think we all want to live. Yeah, definitely. You know, I don't think people actually realize how everything is connected sometimes. Like people, you know, they want to cure one thing and one ailment that's going on in their body, but they don't realize that everything is connected. And in order to have a really, you know, a healthy, a happy, productive life that you really need to take care of everything in your life like you know your mind your body your soul you know it, it has to do with how you know, how we change our lifestyle and we, we create a heavy you know a healthy lifestyle how we focus on things how we don't overdo it in life sometimes because a, a lot of people especially i know on the east coast we overdo our limitations many of us you know we just keep on going and going and going and going and sometimes you have to just quit when you, your body tells you I've had enough, you know, so maybe you could talk about the importance of, you know, really having a healthy lifestyle and how everything is connected and maybe give the audience some tips, because I think what people really have to understand is, you know, what we eat, the lifestyle we have, you know, how exercise could actually help the body, how everything in, entails, you know, giving yourself a little self-love time and all that, you know, ties into one, one thing, you know, a healthy mind, body, and soul. And maybe you could talk a little about that. Sure. Well, you know, Stacey, I think that you and I were kind of talking off camera about how we we get burned out because we got so many different things that we want to take on. Right. And, right. and you're right. There is a different level of, of uh, pace to life on the East Coast compared to out here on the West Coast and even in Canada. Right. So, um, you know, I think that as it relates to nutrition, OK, of course, everybody's heard the cliche saying we are what we eat. Right. Well, mm -hmm. we also are what we think. Um, and so I really think about those two things in combination. Well, I am what I eat, right? So if I'm eating garbage, um, you know, one meal is not the end of the world. But if I'm consistently eating garbage, that's what my body is using to rebuild itself. I mean, we right. have millions of cells every single day dying and millions of cells every single day rebuilding our, our body, right? Right. Um, and so whatever I'm taking in is what my body is going to use to rebuild. Yeah. So one of the things that I noticed with people is like, okay, um, you know, maybe I had like a, an unhealthy meal. Okay, that's not the end of the world. But if the unhealthy meal turns into an unhealthy day of eating, turns into an unhealthy week of eating, turns into an unhealthy month, now that's just kind of like how we eat. Yes. Initially, you may not really notice too much of a difference. Okay, maybe I feel a little lethargic. I had uh, too much pasta for lunch or whatever yeah. the case may be, right? But here's the key part. Your body is taking in those nutrients to rebuild. Yes. What happens at the end of 30 days when all I've done or ma majority of what I've done is eaten like crap for those 30 days? Right. Now my body has rebuilt at a cellular level from those building blocks. Well, right. do I want to build from healthy building blocks or processed food building blocks? So I think that that's kind of a key point to make. That's an excellent point. You know, when you say it like that, you know, I think people really, that opens their eyes, you know, it's, you know, what food are you putting into your body that's rebuilding your body? Because I don't think people realize that. And, you know, they're just, they're just, you know, everyone's on the go and go and go and people are just grabbing food. And, you know, even though it might say healthy on the label, it's not really healthy. It's processed a lot of these right. foods, you know. Right. And, you know, a lot of these foods, oh, it's healthy nuts in it. But, you know, it's like, you know, then it's like, you know, X amount of fats, saturated fats in it. And, you know, you're looking at the whole ingredients and you're like, well, this isn't really healthy. 
you know, and right. people don't realize that, but yeah, you know, rebuilding our body, you know, we really have to think about, you know, everything that we put in our body, we're, you know, we're using that to rebuild our body. And if we're putting a lot of junk and a lot of crap into our body, you know, our body, it's going to affect our organs, our mind, the fogginess we feel and, and everything. And we really have to really step back and really think about what we're putting in our body. Now, how do you feel about vitamins and supplements? Do you like using vitamin supplements? Do you think it's a, it helps, you know, with the rebuilding of your body and mind? Yes, yes, absolutely. I'm a huge believer in supplements. Um, I don't think that supplement, they're, they're exactly that. It's a supplement, right? Yes. So we can't just rely on supplements all the time. But, and I should preface this by saying, I'm not a medical doctor and this is not medical advice, but I have worked very closely with doctors. And there have been situations where people have come to me, whether that's for life coaching or mental health counseling. And it's very often with women where they say, Matt, Ryan, I'm just feeling super drained out. I'm feeling super tired. Now there, there is very likely a super mom burnout component to that because oh, moms are amazing and awesome uh, for many different reasons, but that's yeah. one of the big things, right? But there's also another component too, and this ties into nutrition and supplementation and everything like that. If I'm not eating healthy, now this is, we're, we're scanning, you know, before I talked about like a 30 day window, here yeah. we could be talking about a 90 day window, 180 day window, right? Where right. if I'm not getting my body those essential vitamins and nutrients that it needs because I'm not eating healthy, right? Now my body is starting to lose out on some of these very essential and critical, um, you know, minerals. Right. And vitamins. So I'll share just a few of them that come up with uh, the women that, that I work with and the women that I've referred out to medical professionals. Magnesium. Yeah magnesium is involved in over 300 metabolic functions in the human body. Yeah. Having your magnesium levels checked is very important. Mm -hmm. And there's a, you know, magnesium is extremely important to overall function of the human body. Iron. This is a huge one for women. Of course, women are menstruating, right? So every 28 days, yes. their body is flushing that out, the blood out. And so those iron levels can drop. So Again, this is not medical advice, but if you're feel if you're you know woman and you're women or men, but I see it more common with the women that I work with, right? If you're feeling tired, if you're feeling lethargic, if your hands are cold, if you notice that your hair is starting to thin out, yeah, definitely consult with your medical doctor, but really look into getting your iron checked. And again, this yeah. very commonly coming from red meat, which um, you know some women don't don't care to eat red meat, right? And it's like okay. Well, there is a situation where supplementing with iron is very, very important um, because that could make a game changer of a difference, making sure yes. that those levels are healthy. So that's just two that come to top of mind. And how do you feel about like lifestyle changes, like with sleep? I don't think people realize the importance of, you know, sometimes we like we were just talking about in a couple minutes ago, you know, the go, go, go. But, you know, how, you know, I, I remember when I was working with Ariana Huffington and she and she just came out with her book back, you know, because this is a couple of years back and it was sleep deprivation and she was constantly on the go working really hard. She had her goal set, but she didn't get enough of sleep. And then one day she collapsed you know and it was because of the lack of sleep and just overdoing it and yeah. i think a lot of people do that to themselves and a lot of people have a hard time with insomnia too because mm -hmm. they are constantly worrying about the next thing they got to do the next day and mm -hmm. you know either they're they're trying to accomplish too much in one day or they're and or they're worrying about what they got to get done the next day and then yeah. it affects their sleep and it affects their mind, anxiety. You know, sometimes people get even panic attacks from this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what would be some suggestions for people, you know, about getting enough of sleep and the importance of sleep? That's a great question. Here's what I can say. Whatever your mind is focusing on before you go to sleep, that's what's being put in your subconscious mind and, and running for however long it is you sleep. So if you're going to bed feeling anxious, feeling stressed out, worried about what it is that you need to do tomorrow, that's what's ruminating in your brain and your subconscious mind. Yeah, That's what's going through your body. And that's very often how you're going to wake up. And so I think that's where people kind of get into the cycle of, oh my gosh, I'm going to bed stressed out and I'm waking up tired, right? Well, because right. we're not sleeping and we're focused on what we're anxious about. So some tips and tricks to that is focusing on what you're grateful for, focusing on what it is that I can control in that moment. 
Right. And when we focus, you know, gratitude and anxiety can't coexist together. They Mm -hmm. can't. Right. No. Just like sickness and health can't coincide together. Hate and love can't coincide together. Exactly. So for those individuals that are struggling with feeling like, oh, my gosh, I've got insomnia. I've got anxiety. I'm struggling to go to sleep. Hey, at the end of the night, focus on what it is that you're grateful for when you put your head on the pillow. And hey, you know, to be vulnerable for me, some of that has just been man, I'm grateful that I got a bed to lay into and a pillow to put my head on instead of sleeping in my buddy's basement. Right. Um, So, you know, sometimes you got to get down to the very, very nitty gritty of what you're grateful for. Yeah. With that having been said, if you can find gratitude in the difficult times, oh, it's that much easier to find gratitude when things are, when things are good. Because let me tell you that propensity for anxiety, that ain't going to stop. Right. Whether you, whether you got a lot of money or whether you got no money, whether everything is going great or not so great. Yeah. Not serving anxious programming is still going to flip on. So if you can figure out how to master it when you're stressed, it becomes that much easier to master it when, when things are going better. Yeah. And I think that's a big problem for a lot of people. And how do you, how do you, you know, what are some of the great tips? Like you, you just mentioned taking, looking at the hard times and just pulling gratitude out of those hard times. And I think that, you know, I, I preach that myself because, you know, I think it was like, you don't realize how valuable things in life are until they're taken away from you. And sometimes the simplest things in life could mean so much, but we don't realize it until it's taken away from us. And I think, you know, with every hardship and every, every th- obstacle I've ever been through anything, I've always pulled out the positive things out of it. And it's actually made me stronger and it's made me appreciate life in, in yeah. different ways. It gave me, I say the new set of eyes, the eyes that I didn't have before, you know, but I, I think, you know, it's, that, that's great advice. I think it's really effective, you know, but some people, you know, ha- you know, they, they, they want to feel better, but they just don't know how to get out of that routine. And it's so hard sometimes to break routines. Like what, what are your suggestions do you think for breaking routines? Great question. Let's acknowledge that the brain is designed to gravitate towards what it's familiar with. Right. So if, if your pattern, and we've all been there to some extent, right? I, I've yeah. slipped into it. So if our pattern is anxiety, if our pattern is worry, if our pattern is depression, okay, then we have to understand that, hey, that's what my brain is going to gravitate towards. That's yeah. not something bad. That's what it's designed to do, gravitate towards what it's familiar with. So right. we, have to be, we have to be aware that we're in a prison in order to break out of one. So right. be, be aware. It's okay. Hey, I'm not okay. Hey, I am feeling anxious. That's okay. Now we've identified the program. Now it takes discipline, daily discipline, and a realization that the brain works for us. We don't work for the brain. Right, exactly. Mind, the mind, yeah. right? So, okay, mind, I understand. I've been working for you. You've wanted me in this anxious state. Yeah. Okay, but guess what? You work for me. I don't work for you. And exactly. I'm making a conscious decision to be grateful. Now, of course, the brain is the old programming of the brain is going to push back against that. That's yeah. okay. And that's what it's designed to do, right? But you just keep letting it know. Nope, I'm in control. I'm in control. I'm in control, right? And right. you keep pushing that into your conscious mind enough. Eventually, it will rewire the subconscious mind. It's not easy, right, Stacey? Like, oh, you know, no. you're, you're a coach. You help people. Listen, if it was easy, everybody would do it. It's right. not easy, but it is possible, and by exactly. the way, once you, once you get doing it and you get some momentum, you actually realize like, hey, it's not as challenging as I thought it was going to be. Right. Exactly. I always suggest, I don't know how do you feel about it, but I like when people start journaling and creating short-term and long-term goals. Like if they create a strategic plan and they have that plan in front of them, you know, you talk about what you need to do and then you create like a strategic plan. What's my objective? Okay. You know, what are some short-term goals that can get me towards that path? You know, what are some long-term goals? Where do I want to see myself three years from now, five years from now, seven years from now, and then, you know, make little goals and, you know, and not not have to like feel like you're obligated to make those goals at certain times but every time you yeah. do like reward yourself give yourself some yes. self-love and self-gratitude yeah yeah that's a great one i call that building momentum right yeah. so let's hit some things that we want to do let's check it off the list and let's celebrate ourselves with that self-love right yeah. that, that hey I'm working towards my goal and celebrate that stuff because that's what helps to build momentum. And that's what helps us to embrace the process. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Right. 
And if if we're really high achievers, and Stacey, I know you you are, and, and probably mem- many members of your audience are, that's why they mm-hmm. listen to the show, right? They're high achievers. So it's like, right. okay, I hit that goal, but I always want something next. I hit that goal and I always want something next, right? Okay, well, that's healthy only if we embrace the process exactly. of, of getting there. And that's to your point about that self-love and that self-celebration. And by the way, sometimes people will come to me and they'll say, well, Ryan, I don't have the money to go uh, to the Bahamas for a week to celebrate myself. That's okay. Go to Starbucks and, and buy, you know, they got this berry, uh, berry, hibiscus, berry, berry hibiscus drink or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got to be uh-huh. honest with you. I, I wouldn't pay $7 for, for a drink from Starbucks <laughs> on, a, on a regular basis. No hate out there to people that do. But yeah. Money, everybody's got seven bucks, right? You know, right. I go out and I, I buy the Berry Berry Hibiscus drink or whatever it is this summer, right? I sit there and I enjoy it. And every little sip, I say, man, Ryan, I'm proud of you. Yes. Right. Yes. And, and so little things like that, I think, and that's what self-love is really about, right? Oh, hundred percent. The big materialistic things. Yeah. Because really I call it the onion, you know, all that materialistic things. Like if you peel an onion, when you get to the middle, there's nothing there, you know, mm-hmm. and you don't want to be that onion. You want something to be there. So it's like, you know, you really have to like, you know, there's more to life than just materialistic things. You know, people do, you know, they see the glamour on TV and the glitz and they hear about it on, on the media, but you know, it's really, you know, if people aren't happy with themselves, they could have all the things in the world and it's, they're not going to be happy. It's all comes from within the heart, I think. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I could give you $10 million and lock you underneath a closet. That money isn't going to make you happy, right? Right. So, um, you know, if if we don't love ourselves, it doesn't matter what external validation comes in. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. You know, look, look, look at look at look at Robin Williams. Right. What a tragedy that was. He was a oh, tremendous yeah. actor and so much love. Right. Yeah. He put so much love out there to other people. I'm sure everybody told him how funny and great he was. Right. But right. if we don't have that self-love inside, it's never going to be enough coming from the external. It no. will only well, fill us up temporarily. No, it, it just temporarily. And I, I feel like, you know, we really have to, you know, I was thinking about it as you were talking and I, and I don't know what your thoughts about, but, you know, since COVID, we've been having a lot of remote jobs and, you know, a lot of people are working from home. And I started to see in a, in a lot of clients that they're home so much that it's actually working against them and not for them. And they was like, oh yeah, great. I, I can get up late as long as I put in the hours and I do this and this and this, you know, I don't yeah. have to go to work and stuff. But then I'm starting to notice from people you know talking to me they're starting to feel depressed and they're starting Mm -hmm. to you know even it it affects some people mentally just by being in the house too much the lack of socialization from other people you know i think it's healthy to get out you know and maybe do a little remote work but and it's you have to make time to really i think socialization is really important how do you feel about that yeah 100 percent. i think that with like the pendulum swung from this side all the way over to this yeah. side and 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 i think you're spot on with that analysis um i i recently had the opportunity to meet with some of the individuals that i had been working with uh in person we did what i call kind of walk and talk therapy yeah. and it was really beautiful to create that connection and um you know this uh, to these individuals that i work with are men and it was like oh dude it's great to meet you you know and and, um, you yeah. know, I don't know if that interaction would have been the same with all of the individuals that I met with, but, but for these two individuals, right. It was just like, Oh dude, it was so great. So great to meet you and do the, you know, and I really, and boy, I tell you, Stacy, that level of connection and strength that, that we got to build, yeah. um, gosh, it, that was probably like five sessions of telehealth. I felt like, uh, that, that rapport and connection was built in person. Maybe you couldn't even create that level of connection, uh, the way that, that, you know, you do in person. So absolutely. I think we've got to figure out how to swing back to the other side of the pendulum. Yeah. That's towards right. really re- re-engaging in person. We're social creatures. We're social beings yes. We're designed to, to be in touch and in contact with each other. Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. So I think, I really think it's, it's something that people have to work on. And if they do have a remote job, I think it's really important to get out there and make the effort to socialize and, and to be around people because we are, we're not meant to be, you know, cluttered in a house all day long. And, and I think for some people, it could be really harmful to the mind and the body, you know, yeah. and the temptation of Eden and, and all the other crazy things, you know, and just yeah. thinking too much over out and all the other stuff. It could really work against you, I think. 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, like you were just in Wyoming, right? Speaking right. to people. I was just in, in Manitoba, Canada, speaking speaking to people. Like that's that's what I think it's it's time to get back to, right? Yeah, is, is definitely. Being out and, and creating those connections and meeting with people in person. And um, yeah, you know, I, I understand that that's going to look different for everybody on what that's like. Maybe it's just, hey, I'm going to make it a point to go out for a 20 minute walk, uh, right. you know, in, in a break on my job or, hey, I'm going to make it a point to go out this weekend and go out hiking or whatever the case may be. I don't know. Right. Um, you know, it, lo- it will look different for everybody. But yeah, I would encourage all of the listeners and the viewers out there, hey, break back out, get back into connecting with other human beings in person, give people right. hugs, man. Look, look people yeah. in the eye, eye to eye and shake exactly. hands. Exactly. Oh, it's just so beautiful. So like if we had to give, if you had to give a, a couple to, I know you have to go in a few minutes, but if you had to give people a couple of really good tips to, to really help them connect with their mind, body, and soul, and to really help, you know, improve their overall health, both mind, body, and soul again, what would you say to people, you know, what, what tips would you give people that get them on the right track? Take time to think about what you're thinking about. Slow down. For a second, just just slow down. We live in this super fast paced world. Yeah, slow down to what to the point that we were just speaking about earlier. Go out in nature, right? Right. Or wherever is a peaceful Zen place for you, and right. just just journal or take a mental note or a voice note or whatever it is, right? Yeah. And really document. Hey, what are the feelings and emotions that I've been experiencing most this past week? Right. What are some of the thoughts that I've been thinking the most frequently? What am I thinking right now? Right. Okay. Then think, are these my thoughts or are these coming from somewhere else? Are yeah. they coming from past program? Are they coming from the media? Are they coming from uh, something somebody said to me five years ago? Right. Okay. Now I understand where they come from. Now I want to look at, are they serving me or are they not serving me? If they're serving right. me, great. Keep them. If they're not serving me, maybe this is an invitation to release them. But before we release them, we want to say, okay, how have these thoughts been impacting my actions? Yes. Right. So then we can start to get an understanding. Okay. So I'm thinking this thought, it's causing me to act or communicate in this way. Oh, wow. Maybe that's the source of my anxiety. Maybe that's the source of my depression. Right. So the biggest, biggest tip I could say is get quiet. Think about what you're thinking about. Go out in nature, slow things down, and then really start to parse back and peel back the onion, right? On what those thoughts are and where they come from. Are they serving me or are they not serving me? And then how have they been affecting me? And what do I want to do with them? Maybe it's time to release them. Exactly. Oh, that's great advice. I like that a lot. I love it. I love it. Now you said you're going to be relaunching your book soon. So, you know, tell everybody about people who don't know about your book, tell them the name of it because it's right in back of you and tell them a little about it and, and, you know, so they can, and where they can get it too. Sure. Sure. Uh, I appreciate you bringing that up. So unlock the power of your mind. I published in 2019 and I know we spoke about it in our last conversation, to be honest with you, Stacey, I kind of put it on the back burner for the past year and a half as I've been growing my, my private practice and I'm going to be launching a new, um, and so I launched um, my, I'm going to be launching my life coaching program. It's a little bit separate from counseling. You know, the count, not a little bit, it is distinctly separate as my lawyer has, has yeah. told me to make sure I clarify. Right. Um, right. So, so this is not so much for anxiety and depression and, and different things of that nature. Life coaching is like, Hey, I want to help to get my mind, body, soul aligned. I exactly. want to figure out maybe some of those non-serving programs um, that are kind of sitting right there at the surface that I want to shift to make a change in my life. So I'm going to be making a new push to kind of relaunch the book. I'm going to update it a little bit. And oh, then, cool. yeah, and then um, I'm shooting for uh, at the end of summer, maybe beginning of fall to really launch out, um, you know, the program. It's going to, it's going to be called uh, From Mind Stuck to Mind Blown. I and like so that. I, yeah, so I want to encourage people to just understand the power of their mind and yes. how our mind and our thoughts really dictate our, our thoughts, feelings, and emotions, and behaviors, and actions. And by changing our thoughts, we can change our life. 
That's that's awesome. I I love that. And you know, I always feel like our mind, our body is always talking to us because it's really not the mind. The mind is the one who the is a powerful source. It's a powerful tool, and it reacts. But and and it it tell but we tell it what to do. I think like I always yeah. feel like you know come everything comes from the heart, and if we listen to our body, we our body is always giving us messages. It's always telling us things. It's just that a lot of people don't pay attention to what their body is telling them. That's right. Yeah. So that anxiety, right, or or those feelings of depression that may come up in your body, you know, for those individuals that are spiritual, because uh, you and I love to talk about the mind, body, soul. So maybe we can kind of wrap up here. So I look at anxiety as a con. This is not a blanket statement, but generally speaking, yes. anxiety coming from a disconnect between what our heart and what our soul knows that we deserve and what it is that we should be doing with our time here on earth versus the non-serving program of our mind saying, I'm not good enough. I'm, I'm too much of a negative thing. I'm not deserving of love. I need to do this or behave this way or act this way in order to be loved. Right. Right. And the soul saying, no, you're inherently deserving of love, right? Ryan's inherently deserving of love. Stacy is inherently deserving of love. Right. All of the listeners and the viewers out there, you don't need to do anything to deserve to be loved. Yes. You are inherently deserved to be loved. Exactly. Now, when that non-serving program says, oh, no, 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 you've got to do this to be loved. Now we're starting to create a conflict between what the soul knows and feels in our heart and yeah. what the non-serving program of our mind, right? So there's this internal tug of war. Yes. And I think that very often that is the root cause of anxiety. Now, it's kind of, some people would say that's super esoteric. That's not in the DSM-5. For yeah. me, if we're talking about mind, body, soul alignment, that's very often the root cause of anxiety. Oh, I agree 100% with you. Totally, totally. That's awesome. You know, Ryan, it's been a pleasure having you on the show today. And is there anything that you want to tell anybody where they can find your website, you know, about your coaching, you know, all that other good stuff? Oh, sure. Yeah. Ryan Copiar, holistichealing.com. And my book is available on Amazon. I'm also going to be working on bringing it uh, over to my website as well so that you can order it from both. But uh, if anybody wants a free copy of the book, feel free to email me, Ryan at Ryan Copiar, holistichealing.com. Stacey, I don't know if I sent you uh, an ebook version, but uh, after our call today, I'll go ahead and, and send you yes, over one. Yes, please do. I, I didn't write the book to make money. I wrote the book to help people yes. and, to, and to inspire people and, and to spread hope, right? And to let right. people know. Um, that, that changing their life is possible. So that's my motivation. That's what I'm about, loving people and serving people. Yes, and that's why we got in the business because that's the purpose, you know, is to help others. Because I think that's the greatest feeling of accomplishment is being able to help another person and change their life that, you know, what more could you ask for? Well, that's it, that's it. It was great to be with you again, Stacy. And Same maybe here. we can pick up this conversation again in, a, in another episode sometime. I would in love the, to. In the fall. <laughs> yes, definitely, definitely. It was great having you, Ryan. You have a great day. Thanks, Stacey.